Chapter 2 Suddenly there was a crash from the back of the shop. Both my head and the Grimm's hood swiveled toward the source, even though we couldn't see anything through the shelves. Or at least, I couldn't see anything. I really didn't know what Grimm's could and couldn't see. "'Young lady, are you all right?' questioned Jefferson, hurrying from the front desk. "'Oops,' came Cat's voice. "'I'm fine.' Cat, Ignoring the Grimm, I rushed towards where I heard Cat speaking. "'What happened?' "'I just knocked over a pile of books from the table here,' explained Cat, pushing her auburn hair out of her face as she stood up, a stack of books in her arms. "'I'm sorry. I'm stacking them back where I found them right now.' "'As long as you aren't hurt,' said Jefferson as he picked up the few remaining books from the floor. Helping Cat returned them to the table, which was buried under books of all sizes. I breathed a sigh of relief, then had a look around. I didn't see the Grimm anywhere. Apparently, it hadn't followed me. Grimms are what I call Grim Reapers. I see them usually before someone dies, a foreshadowing that the person is about to pass from this world. The Grimm will come usually within twenty-four hours before the death, trailing the doomed. Lately, though, they were becoming a bit more interactive with my reality. The last Grimm had actually led me to the body of a murdered person, and somewhat helped to catch a murderer. I shuddered. Was the Grimm really reading in a bookshop? Could Grimm's even read? Or was it just waiting for the next person to die? The only people currently in the bookshop were myself, my daughter Cat, and the owner Jefferson. I hope none of us were about to die. I couldn't leave my daughter alone in this world. Cat was too young and too precious for me to lose. And Jefferson, well, he was a staple of the town. I enjoyed visiting the elderly gentleman in the bookshop who seemed to know everything about any book written. Cat gave us a sheepish look. I'm really sorry about knocking the pile over. I was trying to get the books on Nikola Tesla. We're having a group project on him for school. Jefferson looked through the books. Here's one. I know I have a couple more. I may get them for you. Thank you, smiled Cat. That would be awesome. Who's working on the project with you? I asked, picking up a stray book from the floor and putting it on the already crowded table. Have you been to the library already? Cat and I have a rule that if we can get it for free from the library, that is the first place we will get an item. It's best for projects and things that we might not get much use out of. So why was I holding a romance book when I could just as easily get one from the library? It was from the dollar pile. The dollar pile was considered okay to purchase from. It was within budget. At least, that was what Cat and I told ourselves on an all-too-frequent basis. I did go to the library, explained Cat with a patient look. I just wanted to see if Mr. Harver had different books. I can reuse Tesla for a number of projects, so as long as it wasn't too expensive, I thought I could get used books about him. Cat flipped the volume over, looking at the price. See, only five dollars. I can afford that. Now that Cat was working a paper route, and at the delightful dumpling part-time, I suppose she could afford to buy herself a book once in a while, especially when it was for educational purposes. However, I dug in my purse, handing her the five dollars. Here, that book is on me. You get the next one. Thanks, Mom, grinned Cat as she flipped through the pages of the book. It looks like there's only the one other book apologized Jefferson as he brought over a heavy book. It's about all sorts of inventors, not just Tesla, so I'm not sure you'll be interested in it. Cat looked over the book while I took a stroll back toward the thriller section of the bookstore. The aisle was empty, and the book that the Grimm had been holding wasn't on the floor. Maybe I had imagined the whole thing. Was I losing my mind? Since when did Grimm's do something so normal as read? Did they have time between collecting the souls of the departed? All I had were questions which I had no answers to. I think I'll take just this one, said Cat as she caught up to me. Hey, 
Why are you in the thriller section? You say they always give you nightmares. That's true, I nodded. I wrapped my arm around her thin shoulders. Why don't we buy our books, then get our grocery shopping done? Then we can get my bike from the spinning wheel. Okay, said Cat easily. So, who's in your group for the project? I asked again as we paid for our purchases. Amelia, Bryden, and Pete Pesky, muttered Cat, her face darkening at Pete's name. Pete was a year younger than her and had skipped a grade. He tended to tease my daughter, something she didn't appreciate. You aren't supposed to be speaking with Bryden, I frowned. Bryden and Cat had gotten into some trouble just last week, and I had told Cat she needed to wait until November to have any contact with the boy again. It was a punishment for Cat since she had a crush on him. Did you happen to forget about that? Thank you for listening to this chapter of Two Drops of Chaos. Did you know that Three Drops of Poison is available on Amazon right now? You can find it there. Happy listening and happy reading.